Hi, and welcome to KIN 483, Statistics in Human Movement. I wanted to show you guys how to navigate our course in Beachboard. Um, you'll notice that the course I'm kind of taking you through is a course shell, um, but what your course will look like is exactly the same. Instead of course shell, it will say the section and the course number. Um, up at the top here, I've given you guys some quick links that you can use throughout the semester if you need any troubleshooting help or if you need to review anything um, that I've posted in like the welcome videos. So I have our course intro video linked here. Um, this video will be linked up here at the top if you ever need to refer back to it. If you need help downloading SPSS, accessing the virtual lab, um, accessing YouTube's transcripts if you like to have transcripts uh, kind of supplementing what I'm saying in the videos. Um, and then there's also a link to help you with exporting data um, and outputs in SPSS, which will be important later in the semester when we start working in SPSS a little bit more. If we scroll down, you'll see two other widgets. This is the Start Here widget, which you probably have already seen. Um, if you want to collapse this after you've, you have completed the, the Get Started module, you just click on the drop down and then collapse the widget. Okay. Um, on the right side, you have all of your calendar due dates, so you can see when availability begins, when it ends, when assignments are due, that type of thing. Over here, you'll have your news items. So typically, this is from a previous semester, but news items usually will tell you what is due for the week. Um, it'll have office hour links and appointment links, and then it'll also tell you kind of an overview of what's happening for the week and what assignments you're going to be doing for the week. Um, further down, you can see my contact information. So this is linked to mail um, or whatever mail app you might be using on your computer. I put the Calendly appointment link in here as well as the Zoom meeting link if you do schedule an office hours appointment. My bio is down um, underneath that if you want to read a little bit, of, little bit more about my background. And then down at the very bottom, we've got some student resources. These are all linked in the syllabus, but um, if you need any like technology help desk or if you need to access the university library website, all of that is linked in here. There's also some more kind of policy stuff down at the bottom. So these are additional resources uh, that are specifically provided by Academic Technology Services. Okay. Um, so this is all the course homepage. In the content section, the first thing I want to show you is where to find the syllabus for the course. So if you click on the overview tab, and this will only show up if you're in like the older version of Beachboard, which should be true for everybody because that's how I have it set up. The course syllabus is linked in that overview section. It's for a view only link to the course OneDrive. So when you click on that, it should open up a Word document. You have the option to download it. There is a downloaded version that I've already included on Beachboard, so alternatively you could download this copy as well. Um, the only reason why I would probably use the OneDrive link is because that one gets automatically updated if I change anything uh, versus this one I have to like drag and drop. So if I've some for some reason forgot to drag and drop to update this document, then the OneDrive link would be more up to date. In your table of contents, the first tab that you'll see is basically how to get in touch with me. So I have my email down here. That's, that's my email link, um, same one that was provided on the course homepage. Make sure when you start your email that you're noting what class you're emailing from. Um, 
as well as some reason why you're emailing. So if you're emailing about an assignment, you might put Ken 483 activity one question. Um, if you have any attachments, maybe you had a SPSS error or something of the sort, right? You can take a screenshot um, to send so that I can see what error message you're working with. And then just make sure your name is somewhere in the email. Usually Outlook emails are pretty good at a um, identifying you through your email address name, but if you are emailing outside of your student email, which probably should not be the case, but if you were uh, emailing through um, an external campus email, then just make sure your name is included just in case so I know who you are. I have office hours linked down here. In this section, I've linked the Calendly link. So if I click on this tab over here, this is what it will look like. Um, and so what you can do is you can click on a date. You can schedule office hours up to seven days in advance. Um, and when you click on the date, I have office hour appointments uh, scheduled for every 30 minutes. You just click on a time that works for you and then that slot will be scheduled. You'll get a confirmation email and whatnot. Um, and then you'll use this Zoom meeting link to meet up at the time that you have scheduled. Okay. Um, this is the same Calendly link and this is also the same Zoom link. So both of these, either one of them should work. I've also linked the course syllabus in the contact the instructor, or instructor section. Um, again, this is the OneDrive view only link. So um, I would prefer you guys to kind of consult the course syllabus, especially if, if you have general course questions. If they're more specific to assignments or grades or something like that, then um, or if you can't find the information you're looking for in the syllabus, then that's when you would email me. So that's that section. Underneath there is our course OneDrive link. So everything in this class, instead of posting documents and PowerPoints and PDFs, what I've done is I've linked all of your assignments to a OneDrive folder. And you'll see what I mean when we actually get into the different modules. But if you want to just have access to everything course related and save this OneDrive folder to your own personal folder or like your personal OneDrive if you use OneDrive, that's fine. Um, but just a preface that uh, if I have to update any documents or assignments or data sets if the, you know somebody points out that something's kind of off, I'm doing OneDrive links because if I alter them within OneDrive, it'll automatically update in Beachboard and then I'm not having to make sure that links work after the fact. So you do have access to our course OneDrive folder if you want to access your course materials that way. The Get Started module is where you should be located currently. Okay, so um, this is our course orientation and uh, you have the get started quiz due next Wednesday um, introduce yourself uh, discussion board due next Wednesday the pre-semester survey is optional and all of these assignments are linked in this assignments section down here so these should take you directly to the quiz to the discussion board and to the survey um, within the course for the Get Started checklist, this will look a little bit different um, in a student view, but when you click in there, it will have all of your tasks. And there should be a little bubble that you can click on to say like you've checked off that assignment. You'll then see a progress bar across the top of your page so that you can see how much of the module you have completed. I personally like the checklist because it tells you what percentage of your coursework you have left for the week. Um, but once you have finished this module, it will automatically unlock module one. Now I've put the modules in sets of three based on how 
they will contribute to the exams you take in the class. So if we click on modules one through three, these are all of your exam one topics. So I've given a brief description of what each module goes over. If you want to access the specific module learning outcomes and how they align to different activities, I have a, a Microsoft Excel like OneDrive link. Again, it's download or it's a view only, so if you want to have a copy of it, you can download it and just follow along throughout the week. Um, I used to post all of the module learning outcomes in the description box, but I had students who were like, oh, it's too much to read, or I didn't pay attention to it. So they are there if you want to read them. Um, I also include them on some of your activities at the top of your assignments so you can see what you're trying to attain by the end of your assignments. Uh, important module dates. I have when each module starts and due dates that are associated with different assignments in those modules. Exam 1 review has kind of a loose due date, although it is kind of set in stone. There are optional assignments for that week, so technically you don't really have to do anything. Um, and then I have your exam date uh, listed here. <clears throat> Underneath that, you can see each of these modules, um, and you can expand them uh, one by one, or you can also view them in this sidebar over here. So if we go to module one, you'll see the description for the module. I have the topic, start date, end date, um, any assignments that need to be turned in, as well as the percent of your final grade that they are contributing to are all listed here. Again, the spreadsheet that has all of your learning outcomes is linked in the bottom of that description. Your module one checklist, I would recommend using the checklist. Um, just again, because I have everything linked in the checklist, so basically you just keep that list open and work through your course content. I also order things in the way that I would approach doing them. if. I was the one doing the module. Um, so I haven't finished linking these just quite yet, but you'll see a lecture section that has all of your module or all of your lecture materials. I have both PowerPoint and PDF versions. I, I know personally I like to use Microsoft OneNote, so PDFs are typically like the version that I would prefer um, because I can insert it as a printout in OneNote and then write stuff in on like my iPad or something. Um, but if you like PowerPoint versions, I've included a bullet section in the notes part of each of the PowerPoints. I do sometimes, if we have practice problems in the PowerPoints, I will note in the videos if there are answers in that note section. So that way, if you did use a PDF, you can always go into the PowerPoint, look at the notes, and make sure you write down what the answers are. Um, that way you can double check your work. Module 1 lecture videos will be linked here. I usually put how long each video is and then the total watch time. This will vary from person to person uh, based on how much you start, stop, and rewind. Um, so approximate watch time without stopping is usually what I will give you um, in this description area. If we ever have any practice sets or practice problems, especially if we're doing calculations, typically this is going to be for like the first three modules and then past that everything that you have to practice will be in your activities. Um, but if there's a practice activity, I will link it in uh, the section underneath the lecture since it's usually paired with the content that we cover in the lecture. You'll then see a practice section for your activity for the week. I'll post the materials that you need to download prior to watching the videos. And then I usually will link the practice assignment in um, the checklist. So then you can see how many questions you're going to be getting. Um, all of our practice quizzes are going to be untimed. Um, and then I put a little note down here because some of the questions you answer may not be auto graded correctly, especially if it's a short answer and you typed in 
too many numbers or you rounded differently and that rounded number isn't what's in my answer bank. Um, if you think that a, you know something was graded incorrectly, you can always just shoot me an email and say, hey, can you check my quiz attempt number this? They're going to be a random set of questions, so if you can give me the number of the question that you, you think you should have received credit for, I can double check it in your quiz attempt and then um, make any adjustments if needed. Underneath the practice section, we then have your task section, which you do independently. So I'll have usually an overview video that goes over kind of what the instructions are for the tasks that are being assigned within that um, particular activity. I'll then give you all of the materials you need to download for that task component, so any relevant instructions, your data sheet, and the answer sheet that you submit to Dropbox. And then usually the last thing in the checklist is going to be any relevant supplemental resources. So every for every module that we do in this class, I give you guys a key terms and concepts page, which basically if you had gone through the lecture PowerPoint and took out any of the terms that I highlight in there, it would have key terminology. It also summarizes any statistical tests that we cover for a given week and how to run those tests kind of in a bullet list format. Uh, usually if we introduce any new Excel formulas, this will be particularly important for the first three modules. Um, I usually put down what those functions are and how you execute them in Excel. And then I usually also have a bullet list of things like if you went through the lecture PowerPoint, these are kind of the key things that you should be able to pull out. So really they're like little baby module study guides and then you can put all of those together to make a study guide for the exam that they lead up to. Okay, so this is um, the checklist format that you'll have every single week. If we go back to the module and you're you know somebody who doesn't want to use the checklist that's okay. Um, everything is still posted in the actual module itself. If I scroll down under the description and pass the checklist, your lecture materials are linked in here. So PowerPoint and PDF versions, again, all of the links that are in that folder are to OneDrive. Lecture videos will all be linked to YouTube. Um, sometimes if there's a series of videos, I'll just give you the link to the lecture playlist. And then from that playlist, you should be able to choose which video to watch. And then if there's any practice stuff related to the lecture, those will also be linked in the lecture materials folder. The activity is the next thing that's linked. So all your practice materials and your quiz links will be in the activity one practice or the practice section. And then all of your task materials and Dropbox link will be in the task section. Supplemental materials is the other category. Um, and you'll see any supplemental materials that we have for the given week. Okay, so that's generally how this will be set up. Now, the one thing I don't really like about Beachboard is that as you click on different like module components, it just keeps expanding, and then you tend to lose stuff down further. So if this ever gets to be too much, you just click on Table of Contents, and it condenses this whole list back again. Okay, so we have modules 1 through 3, 4 through 6, and 7 through 9. I will release those kind of in their respective chunks. So like after exam 1, I'll then put uh, modules 4 through 6 into your guys' beach board course. Um, then we have exam reviews. Those will be posted when exams pop up. Um, inside the exam reviews, you have... Reviews for exam one, two, and three. Usually I give you a study guide, I'll have a practice set of problems, and then there will be an extra credit quiz link um, that's attached to the review questions that you go through. I have pre recorded videos that I'll post for you guys, so you can either choose to do the exam review on your own or you can kind of follow along in the video to make sure that you're doing all the right steps. I have a final project. 
um, folder down here as well that won't be released until we take exam two. So kind of after that you'll you'll or before that you should have been exposed to about half of the statistical tests that we'll be covering for this semester. And then after that you choose some groups, you kind of start brainstorming what type of topic you might want to uh, include in your research project, and then you can actually make your uh, project final draft and ref or uh, final draft, rough draft, etc. So everything that you need for the final project is in that folder. Any supplemental materials that I include in this class um, will be in this box. And these are all things that are kind of more on the general side, less um, like, you know, like your module terms, uh, key terms and concepts will not be in this folder. Those will be in the module folders that they belong to. These um, supplemental resources are kind of ongoing resources for the entire semester. So I've made flowcharts uh, for the statistical tests, they're separated by the exams that they would be relevant to. But these are great study tools for you guys to use. Um, they take you through how to read the SPSS outputs because there are like there's a lot of information that's included in those. Um, and then sometimes, you know, if you get a p-value of a certain or that meets a certain criteria, you would read the output one way. If you get a different criteria, you read it the other way. So the flowcharts have been a super helpful resource that students have liked in the past semesters. Uh, they're optional to use if you want to use them. If you don't want to use them, that's totally fine. I won't be offended. Uh, I also have statistical summaries uh, also broken down into exams one and two. So exam two, that's a, it's a spreadsheet or table format that has all of the tests that will be on exam two. Same thing goes for exam three. And basically in each of those tables, I break down like what are the assumptions for that test? How many independent variables do you have? How many dependent variables do you have? What type of data do those variables represent? Um, what's the null hypothesis for any assumptions that you have? What is the null hypothesis for the test that you're running? That type of thing. All of those words probably make no sense right now, but they will later in this semester. So if you're a flowchart type of person and you need a, more of a visual representation, flowcharts are usually better for visual learners. For organizational learners, statistical summaries have been a little bit more beneficial. So I encourage you to check out both resources, see which one works for you the best, and then just stick with the one that you like. Um, we also have some tables that we'll be working with this semester. We have a z-table for z-scores and a t-table for our t-tests. These won't come in until the z-table, I say week two or three, and then t-tables won't come in until after exam one. So those will be linked um, into their respective modules. But that's our supplemental resources. I do have a tab for SPSS troubleshooting. Usually if there's some like striking thing that we run across in statistical procedures for a certain module, I will tell you um, how to navigate that. But there is an online help resource. There's like a quick navigation, like 15 minute video that takes you through the layout of SPSS. Um, I pretty much do that in the first activity that we use SPSS, so that's just kind of there if you wanted somebody else's tour. Um, and then the SPSS environment, this is a, a PDF um, that's a copy of Chapter 3 from the field textbook that's uh, optional for this course. There are also videos kind of outlining how to use the syntax window, exporting or copying, um, looking at the outputs, importing data, entering data, that type of thing. These are all pretty quick or short videos, but they are by the book um, author. The last tab that's in this uh, kind of side toolbar are your campus resources. So pretty much all of these links are included at the bottom of the course homepage, but if you want a quick access these are going to be the the probably the ones that you use the most um, other support links are going to be up in the the course nav bar so you guys won't see probably all of this um, 
but there will be a support drop down and that has links to academic technology services. Okay, so that's our content section. The grade section is where all of your grade items will be located. I don't have all of them input in this course shell yet, but um, how we have the the grade distribution section kind of split up in the course syllabus is basically what it will look like in here. So you have your get started module, you have the point value for each assignment, and then the weight that is assigned to each section. So the blue part is the course weight. These little white weights in here are how the, the course weight is divided amongst these course items. So I know like weighted grading doesn't isn't always like super intuitive to most people. Um, but I do I, I will have like an extra resource for you guys if you want to, you know, calculate your own grade. Beachboard isn't always the greatest at calculating it the way that I calculate it in the grade book and I usually run into issues when I have the extra credit stuff. Um, so if you if you ever have questions on like how to calculate your grade, just let me know and I can try to help you out as best I can. But grades are where you're going to be checking on, an, on a weekly basis to make sure that um, you're staying on top of your assignments. If you got a bad grade, you can let me know. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe, you know, we need to talk about like, oh, there was a concept that you missed that week and uh, we can have a meeting over office hours about it. But Stay on top of your grades. It's more of a story. Um, Dropbox is where all of your task components will be turned in. So there will be a link for each assignment as well as the start, end, and due dates. Um, your guys' view will be a little bit different. Uh, you should have a column in your student view that allows you to uh, see any feedback. I attach grading rubrics to each task component. so. Within that grading rubric, you should have feedback on each respective question that's being graded. Um, so that's kind of the activity portion of Dropbox. And then we also have the final project portion of Dropbox where you're going to turn in your rough draft and your final draft. These are both group uh, submissions, which I will discuss when we get to the groups tab over here. Quizzes will be where you turn in all of your activity practice um, components. So from the, like, I walk you through a practice video and then I randomly have 10 questions assigned to each student um, within each of those quizzes. So that's pretty much what this entire section is. You'll also have an exam section. This lockdown browser link, this is like an empty test just to make sure that lockdown browser works on your computer before you enter the exam with Lockdown Browser. Uh, so this is this is just a test link. Everybody will have access to it. I recommend clicking in it to make sure that everything's running smoothly on your computer before you go into your exam. That way you don't have any issues. But there will also be an exam section um, for you to access your tests. Discussions, these won't be, or this tab won't be relevant until after exam one. So when we do discussions, you'll be doing them in groups of three. Those groups will randomly be assigned every week. Um, and then I will email you guys to let you know who's the, uh, uh, who's the primary investigator and then who the research assistants are. So the introduce yourself discussion, that'll be part of the get started module so you'll probably be doing that after you watch this video at some point. The rest of the class discussions um, are underneath that forum so under here I've kind of just put the general guidelines for how discussions will work, what the responsibilities of the primary investigator are, what the primary responsibility of the research assistants are, um, how many posts everybody should have by the end of the module and then I also have a note on if the primary investigator does not post okay because research assistants your uh, responses 
are dependent on the primary investigator creating a post. So I do have an option if the PI doesn't do their work for that week, you still have a chance to get points. Okay, well all of your discussions are linked down below here. The class list is where you can contact other classmates. Um, so if you're in a group with somebody, that would be where you, you have the option to email people in the class. That's also where you have an option to email me. Um, I'm not going to click on it because it does open up uh, information that you guys aren't privy to, <laughs> um, which is like more personal information. So class list, that's, that's what that one's for. Groups are where you're going to see um, who your group members are for discussions as well as the final project. So group discussions, groups are randomized. For final project, you get to choose the people in your group. Every group that we do in this class will be out of three um, because that's, it, it. luckily enough, is the class is, has a, a, a mul is a multiple of three. It's really great. Um, if anybody drops, they're going to screw up that system. <laughs> So hopefully no one drops. Uh, but if somebody does drop and we end up having a weird number, you might end up in a group of four. But this will be where you keep track of your groups and who you're assigned to do work with for the week. Um, checklists, if you want to access all of your module checklists in one place, that's what this tab is for. Grading rubrics will be included in each of your modules, but if you want to look at the grading rubrics for activities or for discussions, you can access all of your grading rubrics here. Um, I also have linked course surveys, so the pre-semester survey, the post-semester survey, and your final project uh, peer review survey. Those are the only three that you'll have in this class, but they're all linked there. They will also be linked in their respective modules. Um, that you might need to access, and then the additional support links for academic technology services is uh, also right there. Okay. If you want to set up Beach Board notifications, you will click on your name, and then you'll go to the notifications section. I'm not going to click on that because some of my personal information is linked in there, but in that notifications tab, you can choose what you want notifications for, when you want them, and how you want them sent to you. So there is uh, like a text message option. There's also an email option. The email will go to the email you have registered in your Beachboard account. So if that is your student email, which I think is the default, and I'm not 100% sure if you can change it, but if it, all notifications are going to your school email, that will be where you get them, okay? Uh, and I believe notifications are for all of your courses. Um, you can choose to exclude some of your courses. There is like a bottom drop down menu that says exclude. And then if you don't want notifications for other courses in the semester, you can choose to leave those out, okay? In the profile section, that's where you can add your picture. Uh, so, since we don't get to meet in person for the semester, I prefer if you have a picture, just so I know what your face looks like, um, and I'm not interacting with just a computer screen all the time. Um, also, you guys are probably beautiful people, so it's nice to see faces um, throughout. But other account settings you can set up through here, so um, that would be like if you're sending emails through Beachboard, you can set up signatures. Um, if you like the font a certain size, I think there's options to change that as well. Um, but if I haven't covered anything or you're not sure how to do something within your uh, Beachboard settings, you can also reach out to Academic Technology Services. They do have a Beachboard support section of their office, um, or you can email me and then I can try to help you out. Um, but that's our course in Beachboard. If you have any questions on where to find anything throughout the semester, come back to this video first. <laughs> it is going to be bookmarked, so you should be able to skip to sections that you need to reference pretty easily in YouTube. Um, but if you can't find the information you need, please email me 
and I can help you out.